resilience can't be taught or, or, or read in the book. You, know, and you have to go out and fail and try again and fail and try again. My God, I fired a 42k into a headwind for like two and a half hours, which was so destroying. On paper, you should have been here half an hour ago at least, so it's, it's concerning. The north wind that made the Vikings, you got, you got to stand up and push forward. So, I'm Fergus Crawley. We are in Torridon in the northwest of Scotland, preparing for the Keltman, which is one of the extreme triathlon world tour races and it's on my home turf. It might not sound like it, but I am from Scotland, born and grew up here. So it feels like I've uh, come home in a sort of weird, sadistic way. Actually, it'd be good for the camera to say that he was awful and make something controversial up, but Fergus is, is, is great to train. Jonathan Payne, my coach of almost four years with the most fitting surname available on the planet. Yeah, so the Keltman is coming up to 10 years old. It involves a 3.4 kilometer swim in Loch Shieldag, which is a sea lock coming off the Atlantic with jellyfish, it's about 10 degrees. You come out of the water at Shieldig into a 202 kilometer bike ride, and then off the bike, you are into a marathon over two Monroes. 1,800 meters of elevation on your feet to finish the day. So it's a pretty brutal day out. Well, can I do this? Can I do this? The answer, you'll not get the answer until you walk into that field you get an opportunity to kind of meet yourself in the middle and say, well, who am I, what am I, what am I capable of? And that's, that's the beauty of it. All I want people to take away from this is that I'm predominantly a strength athlete. I've just learned to enjoy these experiences for what they are. You don't need to chase a certain time, but you also don't need to be so scared of taking on things that intimidate you that you don't do them. I've learned through taking incremental steps over time that the more of these things that I do, the more rewarding they become. And what's exciting for me is that it isn't scary anymore. Okay, we're gonna set the first folks off in about 30 seconds time, and then we're gonna set you off at roughly five or six second intervals after that. Okay, head to the queue, five seconds. A message that I try and put across to people is I, I want people to just get outside more, explore their surroundings more because it can offer you so much. You just feel so incredibly insignificant, incredibly exposed, and I just feel feel more alive then than I do in any other setting. Go! The Keltman Triathlon, like any other triathlon, comprises of three elements, a swim, a bike, and a run. What makes the Keltman different is that depending on your time, there are two routes you'll go through for the run. The high route is going to take you up over two summits, and the low route is going to take you through a very rocky, treacherous technical trail. The difference between the two is simply cut off times for safety. Once the klaxon goes and you're in the water, I've got 11 hours to get to T2A, which is the swim, 202k on the bike, and then 17k of the run. My sole ambition tomorrow is to get there on time. So we're at 10 past six now, they set off at five, so we've had uh, an hour and 10 minutes, which in normal circumstances, I'd expect Fergus in around about now, an hour and five, an hour and 10. So I expect him soon, but I'm getting a little bit anxious. Cold, but I drifted quite far, which didn't make things easy. I probably cost myself five, ten minutes, but I'm here. Could be worse, could have drowned.
do a quick run after You're moving fucking lovely, man. Yeah, you're going real well. Do you think it took him a bit of time to get on his feet after he, after the... No, I, th I think he's bounced or... back quite fast, actually. I, I really, I, he looks sharp. That's he's one of the best turnovers yeah. we've had, actually. basically a guaranteed headwind for that final 42k every year um, and even the race director said that that one was especially bad today so it was just it was soul destroying I pulled over at one point and just put my head on the truck and just had two minutes of just eyes closed on the truck just wondering what on earth I was doing and how I could keep pedaling forwards at 15 kilometers an hour max effort into the wind downhill Yeah, so 7.37, 27 elapsed time, everything was fine. My God, final 42K into a headwind for like two and a half hours, which is soul destroying. I'm a hollow version of myself, but ready to get my feet. It's gonna be a bit touch and go for the high course now, but Johnny's just around the corner. So I'm gonna get into my kit and just red line. Whatever happens, I will do my very best to get there. So oh, I'm fucking hollow. Yeah. Right, I've, got two, I've got two hours. Yeah, walkthrough is mandatory. Mate, you've got two hours. Yeah, you can smash that twice. <sighs> You'll have that done in an hour. <laughs> yeah. uh, Come put train somewhere else if you want. Well. Five to four here now at T2A. Uh, T2A is the cut off for the mountain pass. High course is where we want to be. Uh, Fergus. Really was expected to be in well before now for the high course, so he's got five minutes to get here. It's not looking great. There's no comms, phones don't work, there's no reception, so we don't know why it's taking him so long at this point. Two minutes past four now. Fergus isn't here. I can see, I don't know, two, two three hundred metres that way, and he's not, he's not coming over the ridge either, so he's not, he's not in sight and I'm still concerned because he, he, on paper he should have been here half an hour ago at least, so it's, it's concerning. But I missed out on the high course by 13 minutes and as I said my one goal for this was to get to the high course but when it's that marginal I can't really be disappointed is what it is. I still get to finish, it's not a DNF or anything like that, it just means to do the lower course. But don't start thinking, oh well, you know, we came, we tried, we'll just go the easy route home, this is not easy, this is still <clears throat> a mountain marathon through Torridon. You know, whether you finish or not isn't dreadfully important to me. It's whether you start and whether you give it your everything and whether you come out of it, whether it's on camera or whether it's on the journey on the way back down again. And there's some lessons we can talk about and things that we can laugh about, you know. Things that kind of make you grow as a man and, and that luckily we're in a position to share with others. Somewhere that's out there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Somewhere you're going to cycle, it's... swim or run through that. You know, we don't know which part of it or whether it's the whole thing, but you know, there's, there's some, some beauty in the not knowing. To be fair, a lot of the challenges I've done have been self-driven. So I think being a part of a race, and not in a competitive way, because I, I showed up to this with no real concern for where I placed. Obviously, as I've said, my main goal was to get to the high route, and I actually just missed out on that by 30 minutes. So not the end of the world, but it was nice today to feel like there was some sort of solidarity between everyone.
from R2-1. What a teacher he was then. It's, it's, not, it's not for everyone. The training requires a lot of time and commitment. And that's why, that's why I've sort of taken it on whilst focusing on my strength work, focusing on everything else, because we don't need to be bound by the limitations that we set ourselves. And anybody can train up to take on something like this, but they just need to take the, uh, take the first step and actually believe that they can at some point in the future. Um, lesson learned, I guess. I'll be back.